to you about counter pressure filling into a corny keg. Uh, there are really three key things that you need to keep in mind. Um, the first is pressure, uh, and that's both tank pressure and keg pressure. Uh, the second is um, getting to clear beer, clearing out your racking arm. Uh, and the third is the proper way, the proper speed uh, to fill your corny keg. Um, and this is going to depend a lot on whether the beer is carbonated or not. Uh, so, let's get into it. Okay, let's talk about pressure. So there's basically tank pressure and then there's your keg pressure. Um, both of these values are very important to keep track of and it's going to be different depending on whether you're working with carbonated beer or uncarbonated beer. Um, so let's talk about carbonated beer. Um, so when you carb a beer, uh, basically you're forcing CO2 into solution uh, via, via pressure. Uh, and the greater the pressure, the higher the carb can remain in solution. So um, what happens if you have a fully carbonated beer, let's say between 2.5 and 3 volumes of CO2, and um, you suddenly release that pressure? Uh, well, think about opening a uh, bottle of Coke. Uh, you you um, twist that cap off, makes that big hiss sound, and then it kind of foams up. The same thing is going to basically happen inside your tank. CO2 is going to start coming out of solution from the bottom up, and what that's going to do is any um, true yeast, you know, fluffy stuff on the bottom there is going to get fluffed right back up into your beer. So when you're uh, uh, kegging, you want to keep a really close eye on where that is because as you draw beer out, that pressure is going to drop. So it's really good to keep that in mind. Um, so uh, what I usually recommend is to keep the tank somewhere between 10 and 12 uh, PSI. Uh, and then you, when you um, uh, set your keg initially uh, before you connect it, uh, you want to set that to around you know eight, eight to eight to nine ish. Um, basically, you want it to be just a, a point or two lower than your tank pressure, um, but you want it to be low enough to where you don't accidentally connect it, uh, and suddenly that keg is blowing beer or blowing air back into your tank because that's also going to fluff stuff up. But yes, uh, ten to twelve psi on the tank. Um, start somewhere around eight psi in your keg. If it's uncarbonated, the story is a bit different. Uh, basically, you want to go in much lower pressure, and the reason for that is you want to go in the keg as gently as possible. Uh, you want to try and eliminate, uh, eliminate any you know swirling of the beer or um, going in you know vigorous and splashing around, um, because unless you are a wizard and you completely evacuate that keg of all potential oxygen. Uh, that carbon or that uncarbonated beer is not going to be able to release any CO2 as that keg's filling, uh, and it's not going to be able to protect the uh, the beer from oxygen. So what I recommend for uncarbonated beer, uh, which is my case today, is uh, somewhere around five psi. We don't need nearly as much CO2 because we're not trying to keep uh, any CO2 in the solution. Uh, so we can push that beer in that keg, you know, somewhere around like five to six psi. Um, not uh, use so much CO2 in the tank. Uh, but just enough to where it's actually uh, flowing in there at a decent rate and it's not going to take like two years to fill the keg. Uh, the other reason that we want to go to lower PSI is because um, uh, think about the ways that uh, gases absorb into solution. Um, they absorb uh, faster uh, at lower temperatures and with greater pressure. So um, if your beer is cold, like mine is because I crashed it, crashed it to try and increase the clarity, um, that uh, uh, temperature um, is much more uh, susceptible to oxygen being pushed into it uh, at higher pressures. So my keg, which is not completely purged, I just purged it a couple times with CO2, um, there's enough oxygen in there to actually oxidize that beer pretty significantly. Um, and so to combat that, basically what I want to do is, uh, as I'm counter pressure filling, I want to keep that uh, PSI at a fairly low um, uh, amount in the keg so that I'm not forcing oxygen into solution. And so between uh, keeping the pressure low, filling you know, uh, slowly and gently, uh, and filling the keg completely, that's another key, key part of it, uh, I should be able to keep DO numbers to a Pre, uh, pretty minimal. Okay, so what do you need to get going for this? Um, so I like to have a couple things prepped. First of all, uh, I do not live without isopropyl alcohol. 70% uh, um, isopropyl alcohol is basically an instant kill time for 
most beer spoiling bacteria um, and uh, things like uh, Brettanomyces, Lactobacillus, etc. Um, spray it on, give it a couple seconds, and uh, anything that's on there uh, should be pretty much minimized or eliminated. Uh, as opposed to other chemicals, um, you know, things like star, star sand or um, isopropyl, or uh, sorry, sorry, uh, iodophor, um, you know, depending on their concentration, uh, could have up to uh, a 10 minute contact time for uh, things like diastaticus, lactobacillus, um, etc. And so, uh, between you know, having the spray and uh, having a bucket to soak my parts in, um, I'm you know, basically doing as much as I can to minimize uh, any contamination and pickup. So, uh, what else is in here? Well, uh, I'm using um, uh, Iodafor, and so I've got a little brush in here, uh, which is kind of nice to have. Scrub things out before you make connections. Uh, I've got uh, a triclamp and a gasket, uh, and then I've got my little tagging line here, which is basically a one and a half inch triclover connection, uh, which I'll hook up to my racking arm there. Uh, and then on the opposite side of that is uh, just my um, uh, connecting uh, connector, uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, opposite side of that side is my jump for my corny keg. Okay, so first step is we've got to blow up the racking arm. Um, why? Well, because uh, right now it's pointed straight up, uh, and there's going to be um, yeast, troube, etc. That's basically collected in there and clogged that up. Uh, if I cook, if I hook that up to my corny keg and just start filling, plop that open, uh, all of that stuff's going to get into my keg and jammed up in my line, so I have to clear it out. It's really kind of pain in the butt. So uh, before you do anything. Uh, do yourself a favor and uh, just blow that stuff out really quick. Makes your life so much easier. So, give it a quick scrub, quick spray. Uh, we are under positive pressure here, but you know, you never know. And there we go. Boom. So, let me show you this stuff right here, because this is the good stuff. See all of that yumminess in there? Oh yeah, that was all inside there and would have gone to my keg had I not done that. Boom. Okay, now that that dude's done, uh, let's go ahead and make our connection and uh, see what happens. Okay, so. Now that I've got everything connected, um, before I can jump right in my corny, uh, this guy's still full of oxygen, so uh, I need to basically purge it out. And there's two ways you can do that. Um, I kind of lean a bit back and forth on both ways, um, one of which is you, you uh, basically put your finger in there, push the pop it in so gas can go through, uh, blow that open, drain it into the thing, into a bucket. Uh, or you can also just unscrew um, from the post a little bit uh, and do the same thing. However, uh, with with uh, that method, you know, you're basically trapping any oxygen still in the uh, connector itself. Uh, with the first method, you're basically like sticking your finger in there and it's kind of gross. So um, I prefer uh, getting all the oxygen out and um, I know that you know, spraying this guy out really well with nice alcohol. It's gonna probably kill anything that um, was on my finger that I put in there. Um, alternatively, I guess you wear gloves too, which would probably could be a great idea, but um, I'm gonna go with the first method for this. So, let's get uh, this guy open. Open that up. And there we go. And we've got some nice, beautifully clear beer here. And I'm ready to connect to my corny. Before we just jump in there and connect our corny, there's a couple things we want to do. Um, first of all, uh, I like to give it just a quick spray with uh, ice probe alcohol. Again, just to make sure the outside of that dude's pretty clean. Uh, I already sprayed up this guy, so that's good to go. Um, you uh, finally just want to make sure you check your pressure. So, uh, uh, what I did was basically I connected my keg. Uh, uh, or I should say, I connected my uh, CO2 to my keg first, uh, pressurized that to about 5 PSI, uh, and then I turned my regulator up just a hair, uh, and then connected it to my keg. 
uh, and then connected it to my uni tank. So my uni tank right now is reading um, about six, uh, six, six and a half ish, and uh, that should be great for pushing this uh, uncarbonated beer into my keg. So first things first, um, you don't want to connect it on the gas post. You want to connect it on the liquid post. Uh, because you've that dip tube going all the way down to the bottom there, and what that's going to do is basically eliminate any splashing or uh, or anything else uh, in there. So let's swing around here, and it's going to happen. All right, I can hear the trickling in there. I've got beer flowing. I'm going to give it a minute. And as soon as these two dudes equalize, uh, which should happen here just in a second, I'm going to uh, take my PRV and um, rather than just like pulling it out and letting all that air blow out as quickly as possible and all that shit to just uh, flow into the keg, uh, I'm just going to unscrew it a little bit. And what I'm looking for is just a slight hiss. And you probably won't be able to hear it, so you're going to have to trust me here. Um, but essentially, the uh, louder the hiss, the faster you're uh, letting air out, and the faster you're letting air out, the uh, faster beer is going into that keg. There we go. Oh, that is gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous beer. So, that's filling. Got my CO2 on because again we want to maintain that head pressure. Um, and uh, if this is carbonated, that'd be particularly important because again, as you empty that out, uh, that pressure is going to drop, and uh, it gives the opportunity for that um, carb to come out and, and fluff up all that stuff in the bottom, and then give you not so clear beer. Oh, gorgeous! So I have a racking arm in this tank, which is awesome because it lets me basically set. Uh, that arm in there to where the troop is and I can get as much clear beer out of this tank as possible uh, without uh, getting into any of the, the really gross stuff and keep that all out of my keg which is totally awesome and what we want to do. Um, so to do that uh, there's a couple ways. Um, first of all uh, you've, you've got to have the right gasket and I can't remember the nail off the top of my head um, uh, what type of material, um, but uh, the silicone gaskets or the EPDM gaskets, the uh, black or gray rubber stuff, um, they're not you know great for racking arms uh, in this instance because uh, it makes it really really hard for it to set. Um, but there's gasket that's like a basically a hard plastic uh, that you can put in there, um, which makes it really really easy for you to actually adjust that racking arm. So uh, how we do it is. Um, I'm gonna close that guy off completely, and I'm gonna open this, and uh, it definitely makes it easier, hey, it definitely makes it easier if you have a sight glass in line. Uh, I'm just kind of winging it here though with my clear uh, tubing, and uh, should be relatively fine. So I'll get this filling again, just ever so gently. Whoop. There we go, because uh, you want to flow, and then I'm going to loosen my um, tri-clamp here just a little bit, uh, enough to turn this guy, and I'm going to slowly turn this racking arm. Do that just a wee bit more. There we go. Just a little bit at a time, because uh, what you want, don't want to do is slam into that true and uh, have all of that yeast and stuff fluff up back into your beer.
a little hazy. We're getting just a few little chunks in there. So I'm gonna turn that back up a little bit. You can see them coming through. There, perfect. So I was able to actually get that racking arm pretty dang far. Uh, you know, I went from like this to basically like here. Uh, so, and a tank like this, it's not a huge volume, but you know, when uh, you're doing five gallons at a time, every drop counts. Well, every drop counts, so. Okay, we're coming to the end here. Uh, I'm hoping that I've got enough beer in this tank. Um, cause what we want to do is I want to fill this up completely so that beer is actually coming out the top here. Uh, and again, by doing that, I'm eliminating, you know, all oxygen, any head space that's basically in the keg, uh, and, uh, keeping my DO levels at super minimum, which is awesome. Uh, at work I did some, um, really fun experiments with, um, purging kegs and, uh, testing various DO levels, uh, both, um, uh, in the, uh, the, the, the air of the keg, uh, should, so to speak, uh, and um, post-filling and seeing what those levels were. And what I found was, at least in the instance of carbonated beer, uh, it didn't actually matter a tremendous amount how well purged that keg was. Uh, I had kegs that were way, way above what my meter could actually read as far as oxygen levels inside them. Um, and I filled them, and uh, by filling them up completely, getting all that foam out, you know, getting all that headspace out and going directly to beer, and again, this isn't a carbonated beer situation, uh, the readings they took off of those kegs were in the, like, 20 parts per billion for oxygen, uh, which is incredibly low and um, uh, a really good place if you're in that, in that ballpark. Uh, ideally, you know, you want that to be uh, in a keg situation more like zero, which is uh, definitely a possibility, um, but... Uh, 20 ppb is, is, is uh, pretty dang good. Uh, you know, those are kind of the numbers that you shoot for in cans and bottles is kind of the holy grail. Um, and usually no one worries about draft because draft is, you know, automatically going to be low as, uh, at least, you know, what most people think. But, uh, yeah, finding if you left any headspace in there, if your keg wasn't purged very well, uh, that uh, could translate up to, you know, one part per million uh, dissolved oxygen actually inside that keg. So, uh, some interesting stuff to know um, about kegging and um, purging and filling and all that stuff. Uh, and definitely good to keep in mind as you're doing this. Okay, we should be coming to a full keg here pretty quickly. And there we go. So, I've got it pretty slow, but you can see that is beer. Um, now we can go ahead and Spray that down a little bit, close that off, and <clears throat> close off our tank. Uh, we can take our pressure off because uh, we don't want to waste any CO2. And we're done kegging! Okay, so to wrap it all up, uh, make sure that you are keeping track of your tank pressure. Um, you've got your keg pressure a couple points lower. Uh, make sure you're using the right pressure, depending on whether your, your beer is carbonated or not. Um, go uh, slow and gentle, especially in the beginning. Uh, as that keg fills up um, and gets past that dip tube, certainly, you can speed it up a little bit. Um, make sure that uh, you're filling your keg up completely with beer, whether it's carbonated or uncarbonated. Um, and you're keeping that pressure in check to make sure you're not picking up too much um, oxygen. So that's it. I'm sure there are things that I'm missing and questions that people have. Uh, DM me, comment me, etc, etc. And uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll get them all answered. Uh, anyways, that's the process, guys. Cheers. Thanks for watching.